Welcome to Buddha at the Gas Pump. My name is Rick Archer. Buddha at the Gas Pump is an ongoing series of interviews with spiritually awakening people. There have been over 400 of them by now. And if this is new to you and you'd like to see other ones, please go to batgap.com and look under the past interviews menu where you'll see all the previous ones archived in various ways. Um, this show is made possible by the support of appreciative listeners and viewers. <clears throat> so if you appreciate it and feel like supporting it, um, there's a PayPal button on every page of the site and much gratitude to those who have been supporting it. Uh, my guest today is Lakota John. And pr pronounce your, your name properly, Hoxila. Oh, Hoxila Lakota. Say it again. Hoxila Lakota. Good. It's better that you pronounce these things than I. Um, mm. And I'll just call you John for simplicity's sake. Yep. <laughs> and John is um, the first Native American uh, person I've had on the show. And a number of people have requested that, you know, we do a show about Native American spirituality. And I think, you know, so we'll talk about that, but I think we're going to broaden it out to talk about indigenous spirituality in general. And there's some really interesting points that I think we can get into about the importance of the attunement of indigenous peoples to the sort of deeper laws of nature and how important that is for the general society and how the reawakening of that attunement in indigenous cultures will have a, um, an impact on the larger society um, out of proportion to the, the, their numbers. Maybe if that doesn't make sense to you, we'll explain it as we go along. Um, so let me just read a little bio of John. Um, he is a, considered a, uh, an earth man. And, and what's the Lakota for earth man, John? Iche Wichasha. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Um, who is deeply connected to all things, who understands their frequencies and how to move with and through them. Um, John is gracefully walks the balance between the world of spirit and the material world and uh, brings to us all a unique combination of gifts and a, a great store of accumulated wisdom and sacred universal knowledge. And, and I should add that he, he dedicates himself to um, helping people, to helping troubled youth, to, uh, you know, hel helping people who are considering suicide or who are, are, are mixed up in drugs and all. So he, he kind of walks his talk, I guess we might say. <clears throat> um, John is down in New Zealand at the moment and spends a lot of time there, actually, and has been for a number of years. And in the course of this interview, he'll, he'll explain why that is. So for starters, John, um, Let's get to know you a little bit in terms of like, you know, your childhood, kind of, you know, anything that you find. A lot of times I interview people and they, they had certain experiences during their childhood that were um, perhaps um, signs that later in life they would be interested in spirituality. And then there's almost a universal pattern where you get into your teenage years and you kind of lose that innocence that you had as a child. and then. You know, if I'm interviewing them, they have somehow regained that innocence and that enthusiasm for the deeper values of life. So, how did that go for you? What was the pattern in your life? Well, you know, it, it's it's amazing that you say that the losing of innocence. Um, you know, to us, you know, everything moves in sevens. Um, conception to seven, seven to fourteen, fourteen to twenty-one, twenty-one to twenty-eight. And it moves. When you say moves. us, is that a Lakota tradition? Well, yeah. I, I mean, it's everything kind of, kind of rolls within this this diagram of, of the medicine wheel uh -huh. and and the four corners and 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 the um, the four directions. Mm -hmm. uh, and what what happens in life is when we go through traumatic events, or sometimes we could even be born with different things and 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 character defects and and so on and so forth that take us off that course. Uh, that's kind of like what we talk about in the betrayal of, the, of, of your inner self or your inner sense. You see, and once you do that, you lose your identity. And before you know it, you become dyslexic because good becomes bad and bad becomes good in your world. And, and then later on, you find yourself moving with attention deficit because you can't stay focused and single. 
Mm. Because when, when, when events come in and traumatic events come into our lives that create this separation, there's a wedge between the spirit and soul and the soul and body and the body and mind and, and it just completely fragments us or fragments the, the sacred hoop uh, or as Azalawa, our um, energetic field, uh, the EMF. So when we go through events and things come at us, it's like, it's like uh, when we have this, it's like the cell for instance, when you take the cell and you have your, your cell wall and things get in and then begin to distort um, and go after the, the nucleus. It's no different from these things out there moving outside of us that come into our worlds, going into the spirit and soul of who we are. Mm -hmm. and that's what creates, I truly believe, that separation that, that takes place through um, this thing that we go through. and the betrayal of oneself. Yeah. I was thinking of how to, uh, a, a young friend expressed interest in meditation. I was thinking of how I might describe it to her. And the thought that came to mind was that, you know, well, you know, most deeply we're, we're pure spirit. We're, we're this sort of vast, innocent ocean of potentiality, bliss, intelligence, wisdom, whatever you want to call it. And the, um, you know, this, this, just the sensory bombardment of life uh, tends to overshadow that. And the, the, the old analogy used is, you know, the way uh, the movies playing on a movie screen overshadow the screen so you no longer see it. And then you begin to take the movie totally seriously. You forget about the underlying screen. And so meditation might be a way of sort of diminishing the intensity of the movie, at least momentarily, so that you can kind of appreciate the underlying screen again in, the, in this case to appreciate your innermost nature, once again, no longer impacted or overwhelmed by sensory input. And if you do that regularly, frequently, that becomes a stable standard feature of your experience so that you can enjoy the outer world while maintaining one foot in the inner world, so to speak. Would you concur with that explanation? Yeah, I mean, you look at the World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, it's really, it's really easy to get stuck in that web. You know, I deal, I deal with a lot of individuals that, that struggle with pornography and, and, and all sorts of different things that, that, that take them away from their original self. Mm -hmm. uh, I truly believe that, you know, there's, there's an inner self that, that's connected to a spiritual DNA, which ties back into the first estate. And the second, the second is the outer part, the, the micro of the macro, that, that ties us back into our genetic makeup and our thoughts and our bodies, our appetites. But that, that moves more on that, on that linear uh, line that we talk about that consists of mom and dad and cell and matter that come together and create that uh, biological side to us. But when we start looking at the vertical, it, it, we take it to a higher level of understanding because I truly believe that, that when we connect the heart and we go down this this pattern here, this vertical, and connecting the unseen eye with the garden, I would say, getting back to heart space and innocence, then things ignite, you know, and, and when you're open to, to the universe, you will receive the knowledge that you need to, to give to another human being. And, um, so you how, know, do, it's how do we do that? I mean, well, is, is, it, it, it sounds good in principle, but in practice, how do you enable a person to do that? Well, it's, it's actually getting out of the square, getting out of square thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us, a lot of us today, for instance, you know, you take, you take the, the scroll, mm -hmm. you know, that's round with, with ancient writing that comes with, off the skin of a tree. You take the, the scroll with the ancient writing and stick it in a book with four corners. You get stuck in that book, no different from your television screen no different from any institution that's teaching you to step away from the sacred feminine, the round, the earth, everything God creates is round. When, when, when governments came into our world, they took us out of the teepee, which was round, and put us in square homes, and we became sick. That was a, a prophecy of, of one of our ancestors that was talking about, you know, the round versus the square. Hmm. 
And so when you look at your driver's license, you look at your birth certificate, you look at all these all these squares that we get stuck in, then, then we're in the, in the box. We, we're not even original anymore. Mm. You know, so we have to get back to that, to that, to that, the circle again, you see, and, and, and get back to the, the reality of, of life, that, that we are spiritual beings out here, you know, sharing all this different knowledge that we bring with us from the first estate. <clears throat> what's the, what's you, the first estate? What do you mean by that term? I, I, we call it the spirit world. Okay. You know, you know, when we're when we're spirit and when we're spirit and we come down to earth, we have to connect to earth to experience the breath of life and become the living soul. Mm -hmm. So each and every one of us had to come to earth to experience that exchange between the tree and man. So when you look at that exchange, it's a universal exchange. And a lot of us say, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to hold on to these gifts because I'm not going to give it away because you have to pay for it. Or, you know, this is mine and that's yours and create separatism within our worlds. Mm -hmm. So the tree doesn't argue. The tree continues to bear fruit. The tree doesn't even argue when the seed gets pushed into the ground, you know. And, and so with us, it's, it's like somebody wrongs us. And the first thing we want to do is, is get upset and hold them hostage. So... I heard an issue, you're, you're involved in this Kauri restoration project, or you were at some point, that's a kind of tree in New Zealand, and, yeah. uh, and there's a quote you said, as if the tree were speaking, he said, I am dying from the inside out, and so are you, listen. And um, there's some really interesting stuff that you wrote about it, and, and about that, about how, well, maybe you could just elaborate a little bit about how you got involved in that, and well, what it was. Yeah. I came to New Zealand and, I, and I, I'm fascinated with trees because, you know, we are basically, you know, a carbon copy of this thing called a tree. You know, we, we have seed and soil. We, we come from mom and dad and, and we grow and, and we basically produce fruit. Uh, I came out to New Zealand to, to take a look at some of the sacred trees and I, and I went and uh, spent some time underneath the cowrie tree in fasting and prayer and um, song. And, you know, I was looking at the tree and I was trying to, you know, because there's this dieback disease that, that's attacking the tree and it's, and it comes in unseen. And they're saying, well, does it come in through the root? Where's this coming from? Because the tree is dying. And so, you know, examining that, I went into prayer and the tree said, yeah, look at me, I'm dying from the inside out. Hmm. And so are the indigenous people all, all across the board. You know, and so what is this, what is this, this dieback disease? What is this unseen enemy that's coming in? Well, it's pride, it's ego, it's drugs, it's alcohol, it's everything that's, that's negative that's coming in to, to destroy the human being, or, or you could even say the human cell. Hmm. You know, it's, it's the nucleus, it's the spiritual part of who we are that's under attack right now. And... That's the way I see it. Yeah. You know, unless you, unless you get back to to understanding the tree of life, and, and you can say, hey, wait a minute, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put the brakes on here, and I'm gonna start cutting and pruning the tree, meaning thinning things out and getting things out of your life that don't really serve you, eating right, um, getting rid of bad habits, and before you know it, you know, you're you're at that place of living. You know, when you think about indigenous cultures around the world uh, and read about them, there's, um, there's a certain sense that at one point, maybe not that long ago, many, many of them were kind of idyllic and, produ and possessed a great deal of wisdom. You know, the Maori, for instance, in, in, in its heyday, or the, the Native Americans, or the Bushmen of South, you know, Southern Africa, or, you know, certain cultures in the Himalayas and so on. And, um, and then Western culture kind of came crashing in to all these all these indigenous cultures, and severely disrupted them. Um, so, what was it about the indigenous cultures, if it's true that they all possessed a, a great wisdom and attunement with nature, and and uh, you know were were ideal in certain ways? What was it about them that enabled them to be that way? And what is it about Western culture that um, ruined them, essentially? Well, it's it's going back to the circle and the square. You know, it, 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 it 
it goes back to like, you know, I was talking to an elder here in, in New Zealand that, that was saying, well, when I was a boy, our houses were round. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the, the European came and, and started cutting down the ancient trees and milling them and then created a square home for them, which they call the marae. And the energy, the old guy was telling me that the energy didn't flow the same. But it's it's taking taking the indigenous people out of the round and putting them into the square and then dumping all that left brain system on them, which is academia, changing a language, changing the vowels, the A, E, E, O, U, to A, E, I, O, U. You know, it breaks the frequency with prayer and, and connection to mm. the star knowledge and, and, and the song and our ancestors that that walked the earth two, three, four, five hundred years plus. But the uh, there's nothing wrong with education. If you can if you can retain your identity, there's nothing wrong with religion. If you can if you could retain your identity and what is that identity? It's it's you know, the spirit and soul of who you truly are. Mm. I always say that when, when the heart feels something and the breath says contrary, the words come off your tongue with a split because when a person do, doesn't really speak what's in their heart, then the tongue splits and they become devilish. They become the serpent. Speak, speak with a forked tongue. Right. White man speak with forked tongue. <laughs> so, well, that's because they, they so came in. They came the in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they came in with, with one idea, but yet they betrayed the people with another. Here, sign, sign this treaty that we're going to completely Ignore. not even honor. Yeah. You know, one thing that came to mind as you were speaking is that, um, you know, there's that whole thing from the Bible about God giving man dominion over the earth and so on and so forth. Um, and it seems to me that was kind of twisted to mean just, you know, exploit it to whatever extent you can. It's all here for you. The animals are here for the trees are here for you. Do whatever you want with them and live like there's no tomorrow. You know, but really, I mean, if you think of dominion as kind of stewardship, which may have been what the original Aramaic was trying to say, then, you know, you nurture it, you take care of it like you would with your children. You know, you, you try to protect and nourish and help. And uh, but that's not the way it went down, uh, is it? Uh, well, well, we, we've, we've basically stepped away from the blessing. Because everything, even the even the air that goes in and out of our body is a blessing. The water, the water is sacred, you know, and, and there's a lot going on with the water that, you know, you take big corporations and individuals that are completely, even the farming industry, you know, out here in New Zealand, it's the nitrates and everything else they're dumping on the land, it's, it's contaminating the water source. Later on, two more generations, where are we going to get the clean water? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you look at other countries and... That, that really struggle with having that clean water. But to me, I really believe, you know, like the stuff going on in South Dakota with the pipeline and, and everything that's happening, what, what we really need to focus is the water within, hmm. our blood and how things move from our heart. You know, how the heart pumps blood throughout the whole body to sustain it. Now, is that blood pure? Is your intent pure? Is your, is your, is your heart pure? so that you can actually with that pure water flowing through you or have you been contaminated generations back and you had this hate going on within you or something going on to to basically make the the blood puddle they call it here in, in new zealand dirty mm. so these are things that we have to clean up within within our lives before they they go on outside of our lives yeah you see and so once we get it within then immediately universe will change it um, on the outside, the, the, the macro of the micro. Now, do you think it's really true yeah. that um, if you go back four or five hundred years, all the, the let's say let's take Native Americans for example. I mean, there's there've been indigenous uh, cultures all over the world, but do you think that they they really did have it together, uh, you know, uh, and sort of really were attuned to nature? Because you hear stories of you know, warfare among tribes and all sorts of hideous tortures and things that were being done. So even without the Western intervention, do you think there might have been a sort of a, a degeneration of 
the sort of attunement to natural law among the indigenous cultures that made them vulnerable to Western in invasion? Well, you know, if, you know what, uh, people in all cultures will slack from time to time uh -huh. and not go out and harvest and do what they needed to do. Now, now this is how in tune our people were of the plains on my dad's side, is when you go out to the plains, you can see for miles. Right. So it's like, where are the buffalo? How, how, winter's coming, how are we gonna sustain ourselves? Well, the society, the buffalo society would go out and prepare to actually call the buffalo in. Hmm. So they would load the pipes, they would do the ceremony, they'd do the buffalo dance, they'd acknowledge the ancestors, and they would begin to send the smoke up. Our ancestors would pick up on that and take it and push the buffalo to us. Uh -huh. And then the buffalo scouts would go out into four directions until they spotted the buffalo and then it was okay. The buffalo are two ridges, uh, you know, to the east. Let's uh, get ready. So they would go out and prepare even for the buffalo kill. Mm -hmm. They would pray with the horses. They would they would remove the sacred garment. They would They would go out and only take what the buffalo gave them. They didn't take more than they needed. And even if the buffalo gave them, say, you know, 30 buffalo for that season, then the community would come together, the tribe would come together and say, we, we need to, to, to divvy this up and do this the right way so we don't eat it all in one day, basically. And so everyone worked together as in, in that communal space to, to make it easier for, you know, the, the elders and, and the children and and, and back in those days, everything moved in a, in a matriotic system. Mm -hmm. You know, you know the, the matriarch held the lodge. The earth was in a matriotic system. But, you know, when they came in with, let's turn the earth mother and put it into the patriotic system, they knew that following Henry VIII, that that system would only sustain itself for maybe up to four generations. Because if you don't have any men, guess what? then comes uh, seizure of properties and, and, and lands. So when you look at, say, New Zealand, New Zealand, the land was in the matriotic system, it would go on forever. But when they took the land from the matriarch into the patriarch, then it would only last up to four generations and then they could confiscate it. Hmm. And that's how the lands were. And not only that, we changed the frequency of Earth Mother to male. Hmm. So what's happening to our children today? Okay, so, so to reiterate, you're saying that the, um, the sort of more traditional native cultures had a, a, a matriarchal yeah. uh, foundation, and yeah. the, the European or Western cultures which came in were patriarchal, and they kind of disrupted that balance. That's what you're saying, essentially. Exactly. Okay. And it came with church. It came with church, government, belief systems. You know, look what happened to Henry VIII when he couldn't have a child. He split the Church of Rome because he married another because he needed to leave his heirship. Right. They just followed suit. And they figured, well, if we can convince the indigenous people to do the same, you know, then things will happen where we can go in in a few generations and basically confiscate lands. Yeah, and people were forced into Christianity and they were forced, to, I mean, beaten if they spoke their native tongue, they were forced to speak English and so on and so forth. It's basically just a complete disruption and destruction of the cultures. Well, even forced into incest, you know? I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff that, that's taken place in indigenous country that, um, man, it's it's it's, it's been a, a rough journey for, for our people, for all, all the indigenous. Yeah, I, mean, I work with the Aboriginals as well in Australia, and it, they have the same story. Uh, it, it's but what we're tra what we're doing now is we're actually going back into the cell memory and going back generations because in my practice we heal from back to front. We don't we don't just deal with the immediate. Mm -hmm. We we look at we chase these disorders back and, and corner them, and then actually take them completely out of the individual's life. Hmm. You know, yeah, let's and, explore and that a little beautiful. bit. That sounds interesting. I mean, because we could sit here all day and talk about the, the atrocities that were committed since the time of oh, Chris, yeah. Christopher Columbus. Uh, and, you know, if people want to know more about that, there are all sorts of books written about it. But, you know, what you're doing is, I mean, you're not, I don't think you're dwelling on that overly. You're, you're offering something which can heal that. Well, that's the thing. You know what? When you, when you hold on to traumatic events, 
you become acidic and, and you become very ill, yeah. degenerating. You know, you're holding on to the past and you're stuck there. And, and you know, we all have a past, you know, and, and, and our ancestors live, you know, with us because they're part of our genetic makeup on that on that linear on that linear level mm -hmm. uh as well as vertical because they're connected to we believe that they're in the wind and they're in everything you know and so when we when we actually take a breath and we walk for the many and we walk as a person that's principally driven and and virtually grounded and and we we're the pure love that we are we stand here proxy for our ancestors that have taken the journey and when we begin to look at our truth and our integrity and everything else that comes from within, then we're just, our ancestors are saying, hey, well done, hmm. keep it up. Well, let's talk about ancestors for a minute. Um, in, in Hinduism, they're called the Pitris in, in the Vedic culture. And there are all sorts of rituals that are done to help the Pitris, to uplift them, to liberate them and so on. Exactly. And, it, and it's considered to be a reciprocal arrangement. You know, you help them, they help you. Um, exactly. So elaborate on that a little bit in terms of your, just, your understanding of the Native American culture. Well, that's just like our Teoshpai, our Oyate, our, our, those ancestors that have taken the journey that, you know, we, we, there is no separation between us and our ancestors. Mm -hmm. You know, to us, by, by saying a name, we invoke them right. and they come into our place and time. And society teaches you that, that, that the earth and, and this life is, is, is it. So do all that you can <laughs> to, to eat, feed the animal right. and then later on worry about it when you get to the other side. But in my life, I used to like to, to drink and, and carry on. And, and that was feeding the animal, these lower realms. But I was stuck there. Mm. And once I started basically spiraling in and getting to the, 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 the inspiring part of me, then I started to aspire and spiral up mm -hmm. and started to connect more and more with my ancestors in the unseen world. Because to us, we we put more focus on the unseen rather than the seen. Right. And that's just, just like the tree. When you look at the tree, you see the tree, but you don't see the root system. But the plants all interconnected. They have a network. No different from you and I here now. Yeah. So um, I guess this gets a little bit metaphysical, but is the understanding in, uh, in your culture that um, ancestors, one, that once people die, they become ancestors living in the sort of the spirit world and it just goes back infinitely, like you know, any number of generations? Or is there just a, I mean, it would get kind of crowded up there. Or is there a sense of reincarnation where people come back again? Or how does it work? Well, you know, that, that's a dangerous place to go, you know, because, you know, I, I worked with a pedophile once that said, well, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing because I'm going to come back and, and get it right maybe on the next round and the next round. And I said, well, you know what, good on you because I'll tell you what, I don't think the creator would allow you to come back and continue to adulterate the creation. So you can go on thinking that, uh, but to me, like I say, our connection with 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 our people never never ended there was never was never severed basically right and um and that's why with us we have point zero limits to to what we believe and that's how we can connect with the eagle and actually see things from up there looking down uh -huh. that's how we could name say Bajasapa or or the uh the heart of america looking at the black hills looking at at the heart it looks like a heart from up above mm -hmm. or like the maori people uh, naming the island the uh, stingray because they knew how to astral travel and get out of the body because there was no limitation to their belief and connection to the stars and everything else. Mm. It the, was the world. There's, those, there's those Nazca lines or whatever they're called in Peru, which you know you can only see from an airplane, but that are you know perfectly straight for long distances, and they don't know how they made them. You know, but kind of like uh, what you're saying. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> You know, we, we, we rely a lot on, on science where, you know, science is here and senses is here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and our people stayed in senses. They didn't really go into science because they didn't have anything to prove. They didn't have to go out and say, well, I'm going to, you know, prove this and prove that. And look at how smart I am and look at the knowledge I carry and look at the degrees that I have hanging on my walls. Well, 
that's just, you know, knowledge. What, what about your life? What's in your heart? What's coming out of your mouth? Mm. Um, and to me, when I work in, 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 the, in the profession that I work in, it, it's real easy to look at somebody and, and look at their state of being, and you can actually look at their heart and say, okay, well, what, what created this? Mm. You know, you got sorrow written all over you and you're and you're not deep breathing and you're sighing and, and you know, your lymphatic system shut down. So, you know, what can we do about that to change it? Because to us, everything comes in energetically before it manifests in the physical. Right. And when it starts to manifest in the physical, then you know that somewhere down the line it's creeped in at a root level. Mm-hmm. It's taken you completely off track. And so getting to that level of, of, of helping people heal is, is really the, um, the chore. And, and, and what we really need to be getting to now is, is to basically develop those talents and, and attributes that we bring with us from the spirit world that live in our internal self. Being. Yeah, a little while ago you held up a feather very briefly and uh, you, know, you referred to horizontal and vertical. And so I think what you're saying here is that, um, you know, yeah, there you go, that, that looking, just today I saw some, uh, somebody sent me some quotes from Einstein, you know, there's that famous quote about trying to solve a problem on the level at which it was created is kind of like, you know, absurd yeah. or, or san- right. insanity. And so what you're, what you're uh, getting at, I believe, is that um, trying to solve problems or trying to change life just by remaining on the horizontal level at which you already reside isn't going to get you very far. You need to sort of access the vertical and sort of, yeah, get down to the sort of deeper values of the spirit, which underlie the apparent superficial values of life. Is that what you're saying? Well, well they, say, they, they say the longest journey is, is from here to here. And when you can get out of your head and get into your heart, you're into your innocence mm-hmm. or inner sense. When you can get to the inner sense, you're, you're back in this this place called the Garden of Eden. Mm. But once you get to the garden, remember there are trees in the garden, which is the tree of good and evil, mm-hmm. duality. Uh, and it says, well, partake of this tree and this apple tree and, and bite into this and you will surely die. Well, when you play with this, this thing called duality, you're dying spiritually because you're playing with dark and light constantly. And then you go over to the tree of knowledge and say, okay, well, this is working for me because I've stepped away from the tree of duality, but I'm playing with knowledge. But honestly, if you can take the journey back from heart space to here, which is where the tree of life resides to us in this area here, in the pineal and pituitary, and and you can get underneath that tree of life, then things really make sense. Then Mm -hmm you know that life goes on because we are we are immortal you know we're infinite the spirit inside of us the soul inside of us what we don't want to do is take the journey where there's spirit and soul division where the spirit goes one way and the soul goes another and that's why when i when i share with people when you tell the lie you split yourself by spirit, you know, do, you mean, say, do you mean the sort of the universal spirit? And by soul, you mean individual soul? Is that what you, how you were using those terms? Well, 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 there's there's four parts of us. There's there's the there's the spirit, the soul, the body, and the mind. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so when distinguish between spirit and soul, what you actually okay, mean by those the, terms? The, the soul, the soul to us lives within the breath of life. That's the essence of who we are. Okay, that's what they call the the Maori or or the Wonia is the is the essence of, of that gives us life, but the spirit, the spirit has its has its true identity. We come from the spirit world with attributes and talents and, and identity. Mm-hmm. Now, what happens is the square system tells you, well, your identity lives here, and this is what you should be, but but this is surrogate power, because what happens is the mind begins to try to govern the heart when it should be the other way around where the spirit ends up governing the mind mm-hmm. and, and, and the mind begins to obey the spirit because when you begin to take a thought into the body, you actually start thinking in, in reverse order. So in the medicine will, when we go clockwise, we go mental and we go spiritual, emotional, physical, and back up into the mental. 
when we go counterclockwise, it goes mental, physical, emotional, or, or in the soul level, back to spiritual. So we're going backwards. So what happens is everything that we do is in reverse order because it becomes a thought and then the body automatically says, well, I think that would be good for me, rather than really even checking with the spirit and soul if it's good, good for you. Because the spirit and soul will never betray you. Your innocence will never betray you, but your mind will get you into trouble. Mm. Because it, it did for me for many years. So every time I get a thought, I take it to the spiritual side of me and say, well, is this really good? What, is it, is it going to edify me and, and, and help me get to higher places of aspiration? And immediately, if it's not, spirit will reject it and say, don't even go there. Because a lot of times, like I say, when we go left spinning, we take from the mind to the body and then we sell the soul because we believe that the soul is in the breath of life. Mm -hmm. When God breathed into man and woman, they became the living soul in the creation story. So the soul is what goes through division in life. It's not the spirit that's divided, but a lot of people say it's just mind, body, soul. But that's not truth. It's mind, body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm or spirit, soul, body, mind, when it's when it's moving clockwise. Because either we'll go counterclockwise on the wheel, or we'll go clockwise. So today, you have societies moving and thinking in reverse order. Hmm. And that's what, that's what creates that thing called dyslexia. Because we betray our innocence, and good becomes bad, and bad becomes good. And so everything we see is completely opposite and then it creates attention deficit disorders because our house is divided we're, we're, we're looking at life through this linear line where where we're, we're looking at this and looking at that and, and never really looking up to get to here to get to those higher levels even in meditation you can go into meditation but a lot of people say well hey we got to just tear down the walls but in a home, there's weight-bearing walls that shouldn't be torn down because the roof will come down on you. And there's there's things that we have to be careful with when we step into that realm because we don't want to just become open to whatever that's out there because a sexual energy can come in and before you know it, all you're thinking about is sex. Yeah, I got an email from somebody not long ago um, and she was talking about this young man who needs help um, and he is so cracked open that he's you know, hearing everybody's thoughts and he's just getting all this information that he doesn't know how to deal with and, you know, he just doesn't have any grounding. He's, it's, uh, this kind of thing's happening to a lot of people these days. There, there, there's a sort of an, an openness without any shield, without any filter, and they, they're overwhelmed. They become incapacitated. Well, that's, that's because of the generation, the, the seventh generation that's here today that's going to reboot this this new spirituality that's well actually it's an old spirituality but they're going to separate the common sense from the nonsense mm -hmm. because there's a lot of nonsense out there and there's a lot of fairy stuff out there and there's a lot of duff out there and people are finding when they start going down these paths later on they're, they're completely bankrupt and so they're like well this isn't working for me anymore but this is what i've given up i've given up my power to this person and and now they've sucked the life out of me mm -hmm. so what do i do I, I'm working always in, in damage control. <laughs> People that I meet are are like, hey, this happened, this happened. I'm like, well, hey, I'm just glad you're here today, you know, so this way we can sort through it and put you back together again. Here at the Four Winds uh, and, and Valor, we, we, uh, we do that type of work with people constantly. People who are sort of, um, well, I think I, what I just heard you say was that there are a lot of special souls being born who's, who's, Oh, yeah. role it will be to help bring in the uh, sort of a more enlightened world and um, exactly. but a lot of these people don't they have some some difficulties to go through before they're ready to play that role and, and for some it's a very difficult transition or or actually connecting with those that can actually lead them and guide them in that way yeah because if you, if you take a young person that you know their mind is wide open it's like in our, in our in our tribal societies when you took a kid that acted out like it was acting out like a horse immediately you would say well the horse is connected to that child and that child will grow up and probably become part of the horse society hmm. and then they 
they're so connected to the horse that you know it's they're inseparable mm -hmm. and and what happens is you take them and you develop that talent and then you place them in that in that stewardship no different from a buffalo society a medicine society any type of society mm -hmm. today you take a kid that's born with these talents and immediately they say, well, wait a minute, you need to be a lawyer or, or you should be <laughs> an electrician or, or hey, dancers don't make good money and you like to dance and they want to deprive you of, of, of this passion that you have inside because they want to put you in a square system. Mm. And I think it's important that, that when our children are born to look at, really look close at the attributes and what they carry and what they aspire to so that you can build on that rather than focusing on their F, and, yeah. you know, like, like <clears throat> education, the focus on the F and forget about what you're good at. Hmm. And uh, before you know it, you have a serious complex, you know, because things are not working for you and you can't bring the F up hmm. or whatever happens in life. A lot of times I've heard you say, you know, we believe or, you know, such and such. And you're kind of referring, I believe, to your, you know, your, your native culture's wisdom. Um, are you referring to Lakota culture? And um, I have another follow-up question, but let me have you answer that one first. I, I, I think it's, you got to remember that on the medicine wheel, there's four colors. There's red, yellow, black, and white. Mm -hmm. The red man represents the indigenous people, the earth okay. people. The yellow man represents the Asian, which is the, the one that balances the yin and yang. Mm -hmm. The black people, they're athletic, they're dancers, the Africans, the, the white people are the analytical, the thinkers. Mm. So in that medicine wheel, it's balancing the spiritual, emotional, physical, mental, the attributes of the four colors to bring it to your core and your center. So and I always remember the... What do you, Mm -hmm. oh, I was just going to say, so say that, that must be a relatively new understanding because a few hundred years ago, Native American people would not have even ever seen yellow or white or black people, you know, the, you know before the... Right, right. Well, this, this was prophecies that came through our, our ancestors and elders. Oh. No, different, no different from the, you know, the four colors coming together under the sacred tree. So it's an ancient uh -huh. prophecy that was prophesied even before those people showed up. Right, right, okay. right. You know, coming coming together as a people, as a collaboration, which is happening now. Mm -hmm. More of our indigenous people are becoming more open to sh share spirituality because it, it, life won't go on with this separatism and, and you go that way and I go this way and we have to come together to share that knowledge and bring it all together for this generation to groom them, mm -hmm. to be great thinkers and great leaders. But... Like I say, one has to really get to know themselves. They know themselves on that on that um, vertical or the horizontal line, the, their genealogy and their genetic makeup. But to go back to the vertical line and really connect with sky and earth, uh, which is which is the spirituality and the soul, the spirit and soul of who we truly are. Mm. Remember, we had to touch ground before we became the living soul. We had to come to earth to understand that exchange. And the law of correlation. You know? When uh, I mean, if you look at a map of, you know, the original North America and all the where all the various tribes were located, uh, you know, there are a whole lot of them all over the place. Um, and was there any sort of intercommunication? And uh, was there a sort of a, a deeper sharing of wisdom and knowledge, or were they pretty much autonomous <coughs> and, and um, you know out of out of touch with one another? And each developed their own their own wisdom well i, I believe that they they were kind of like they branched off mm -hmm. you know just like when they populated an area they moved to other areas say the hunting was better there and you know and and i think you know it, it's like every tribe has bits and pieces that that's all going to come together as well but it's it's encoded it's really encoded because the reality to it is, is when you actually go to the inner self, you actually go in and find that truth that lives within you already. Mm -hmm. It isn't something that you have to search for in a book or on the Internet. It's encoded in you. And so when you get to that place, you can actually peel the layers of the program that, that's gone in your ear and 
begin to take a look at the inner self, and that's when all the knowledge starts coming back. Hmm. So, you know, for instance, song, if, if you were a scholar of Native American spirituality, which maybe you are, but uh, you know, would you say that, okay, if we look deeply enough, there is a sort of a, a deeper connection between, say, the Hopi in the Southwest and the Algonquin in the Northeast and so on. There was a sort of a fundamental un unity between all these cultures, even though there might have been superficially some diversity and difference. But yeah, I mean, the thing is, is remember, if we all come from one place, right. then we, are, we already know, we already know the, you know, the dialogue. We, we know why we're coming to Earth. Uh -huh. If you stop and really take a look at what you've been called to Earth to do and what you've been elected to do while you're here in this mortal state, mm -hmm. then the reality is, is what else is there? Because if we're only looking at this, at this linear genetic makeup and what we've learned as napping an arrowhead and evolving, that's really going to just go back into the earth. But let's talk about let's talk about this eternal life, or looking at where we're going after this life. Hmm. You know, uh, what are we creating here in this life so that we can transition without the division of spirit and soul, and 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 um, leave with a death song. In our in our culture. Every tribal member had a death song, and that transition wasn't a bad thing. But you take religions and hell and fire and brimstone and all this fear, it, it, all it just creates, well, I don't want to die. Right. You know, I want to go on forever in this mortal state. Let me go have some plastic surgery and, and try to look the best I can because I don't want to go mm. looking, you know. So, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, to me... If you can create that beautiful state and that beauty that you are within, then you really don't have anything to worry about. <clears throat> so, what do you do on a like a daily basis to um, enrich and uh, deepen your own connection with spirit? I sleep till about three in the afternoon. <laughs> no, I, I. What I usually do, you know. In the mornings at four o'clock, I'm always up at four, three thirty, four in the morning mm -hmm. because that's that's quiet time for me, yeah. reflection, and um, I go into meditation or mm -hmm. prayer, or drum songs out and and really converse with universe. What, what would you have me do today? Mm -hmm. Because I'm a servant, basically. You know, uh, give me an experience today to to share my love, my experience, faith, and hope with another human human being to help them get to a better place because to me it's like we're not healers we just come in with a toolbox and say here this tool does this this tool does that to me everything's about numbers and 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 diagrams and see touch and do's is when i when i work with people it's let's look at conception to seven let's dissect that that seven years of your life what took place what were mom and dad thinking at the time of your conception was it scarcity? Was it fear? Because we're, we're born with all of that mm -hmm. if, if, on, a, on, a, on a physical side. <clears throat> so then when I'll you share have... A story. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'll share a story with you. Please. I, um, I was born two months premature. Wow. My sister, my sister was extremely ill. She was her firstborn. So in that time, my parents were, were filled with grief because they didn't know whether she was going to make it or not. Then I came on scene. And my mother had that same fear as I was in the womb. Hmm. So that that fear was so unbearable, I had to come out. Oh. So I came two months early, but I was put in an incubator. Mm -hmm. And I never connected with my mother's breast. Oh. And so with that, every time my mother tried to put me down, I would scream in a panic. Through all my adult life, I was out searching for my mother's breast one failed relationship after another mm -hmm. until I went back I went into sweat lodge and prayer and, and found out that hey this this thing happened way before you even took the breath of life mm -hmm. and so going back to my mother to making the wrong right before you know it it was like the healing took place within me because I said forgive me for being born at that time mm -hmm. and then my appetites for for the breast fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to go looking for relationships, but it, it took me having to go back 
before I could move forward to really look at these character defects that I was born with. Hmm. And, and it was a beautiful thing because it, it enlightened my world in, in recovery and teaching people how to take traumatic events and deal with them so that they do not live in the cell memory. And it isn't just in your brain. It's throughout your whole body. Yeah. And so for you, sweat lodge, prayer, drumming, chanting, things like that. Fasting, praying. Fasting, praying, yeah. And so then when you work with others now, you pretty much give them the same tools? Oh, yeah. You know, we start, to me, it, it, it isn't hard to look into an individual's eyes and look at what's there. Mm -hmm. The eyes are the windows to the soul. You know, you can look into the eyes and, and do a little bit of iridology and, and, and start looking at traces and, and looking at their hands and looking at their hair and, you know, the features on their face. And, and before you know it, you're pulling things out of them that they wouldn't really share with another human being. Hmm. And then you can give them the tools to fix it. You know, rather than just saying, well, I'm going to use Freud's work or Jung's work and I'm going to diagnose you with this and then you're going to accept it. And then you're going to go see a doctor and get some medication for it. Yeah. You know, because, you know, the diagnostic moves from spirit to spirit. When I meet people, it's like, do I have the permission to speak to your inner self, which is your which is your spirit? Because our spirits will communicate and they will not lie. Mm -hmm. But if I sit back and, and I'm moving on ego or pride and I'm using somebody else's work, guess what? I'm going to misdiagnose. And so if they give you that permission, then you kind of tune into them and um, you're able to offer them something to reconnect themselves with spirit. Right. And then we start looking at the physical end of it. Like health because and diet and things like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Testing the blood. What, what's living in the blood? Hmm. You know, why, why the nucleus is under attack? You know, why the cell wall is weak. You know, we have to look at all that. Yeah, so it sounds like you're taking a blend of ancient and modern. I mean, you're referring to pineal and pituitary and DNA and, and you know, cell walls. And this is all stuff that the Native American cultures didn't even know about. Uh, so it sounds like you're taking the best of both yes. worlds and, and coming up with, you know, therapy. Yes. What are you going to say? We did know about it. We did know about it because this is our culture right here, the sweat lodge. Okay. But and you see, and the sweat lodge is a cell. Yeah. And going in, going into the lodge is actually going into the cell memory, and extracting. Okay. So it was, and but you got to understand, you go back two, three hundred years, we didn't have the issues that we're having today. Right. You know, we didn't have. I'll share something with you. People today that that are basically diagnosed schizophrenic, mm -hmm. in in our culture. It was a blessing because those people worked between the two worlds. Exactly. They were given their own teepee. They were given their own teepee, their own lodge. Because when you wanted to connect with an ancestor, you would. It's past. You would go directly to them, and they would channel, and they would they would give you the answers from the unseen world to the to the visible seen world. Mm. And so the, it was held in high regard. If a man was born with, you know, it was feminine, say and had feminine traits. Mm -hmm. He didn't go out and say, well, I'm gay, I'm gonna sleep with all the warriors. What he did was he was celibate. Mm -hmm. And what he would be able to do is, is sit in a female circle and, as well as a male circle and be able to balance those two energies, you see? Mm -hmm. And they were held in high regard hmm. because a man that could sit in a female circle and have the virtue to even bring in the principle without it being distorted was a gift. Interesting. So there's two questions come to mind from that. Um, well, the second one was, or so are you suggesting that, that gay people are a bit misguided if they have relationships with well, with same sex no, that they should, or what are you saying I'm there? Not, I'm not suggesting any of that. What, I, what I'm suggesting is we have to look at whether it's love or stimulation. Uh -huh. That's so, one thing. So loving relationships, a same sex relationship, your culture would be, would have been okay cool with or but you said they're supposed to be solid. Uh, no, well back 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 in the day people had more um will and they would say it wasn't even about a sexual thing mm -hmm. you know back in the day if somebody felt like that it i mean that's where i'm at today mm -hmm. you know my, my whole life doesn't evolve around sex right that's just a, that's just an energy in motion that's just a stimulation mm -hmm. my love comes from here not my sex gland right 
you know, and so to me, I love myself. I'm married to myself. Mm -hmm. So this way I could even be married to you. Mm -hmm. But and the reality is, is that doesn't mean that, that we're attracted to each other. And we're going to go sleep and stimulate one another. Right. It's it's being connected on that level. So so to me, if we can get past the animal, which is which is the sex part, that, then I really believe we examine ourselves. We can get it right. Yeah. So, but I'm not saying that it's, that it's right. I'm not saying that it's wrong because I, I have a lot of gay friends and I love them to death. Sure. You know. But you're saying that the, um, to speak in maybe tantric terms, you're saying that the energy has, can be sublimated and raised up so that it's down, not down in the second chakra, it's risen up to the heart chakra. And exactly. And one, one can live from there. Exactly. Okay. That, and that's the thing, that's the thing about evaluation. And, and that's, that's the thing about right thinking or or even getting to the place of examining where these thoughts are even coming from because we go and take a thought and we'll either move it into the into the body or we'll take it to the spirit yeah and i'll tell you right now that's that's where the battle that's where the battle exists because when i fall into the body i'm in the animal i just want to do i'm pleasure seeking when i fall into the body mm -hmm. but if i take it to the spirit the spirit might say don't eat for three days yeah this let's, let's put this body in check and so immediately I, i'm putting the body in check because the spirit is saying, hey, there's a struggle going on here. If you take, for instance, in Christianity, the master, before he became the master, what did he do? He went on a hilltop for 40 days. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? Yeah, go ahead, continue. So he goes on this, he goes on this humblecha on the vision quest, right? Mm -hmm. And the first thing he overcomes is his appetites when they say, hey, turn the stones into bread. Okay, second thing he overcomes was his ego. And then he overcomes his pride and then says, get behind me. And then the angels come and minister. Well, what is that? What is that really telling us? If we can get if we can overcome the world, then we can we can have angelic beings, celestial beings minister unto us. Mm -hmm. So we have to get out of the animal. We have to get out of our ego. We have to get out of our pride. And then then we have the reception. It's like to me. When I work with people, what does it take to 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 have a, a connection with with another individual? It takes a, 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 a proposal. It takes an engagement. It takes a wedding and a reception. What am I proposing today to 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 quit what I'm doing? You know, how would I engage with it? How will I marry it and fuse it so that my reception can be turned on mm. so I can be switched on at all times? If I don't have a proposal, then I sure in the heck ain't going to have a, 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 an engagement because what am I going to engage with? So so without the engagement, where does the marriage come? The marriage comes from marrying the heart, the breath and the tongue. And that's when, when you speak your truth. And then nothing but pure thoughts and images move into because the mind goes through a renewal process. But you have to get to the innocence. You have to go through the integration, the marriage before you can have that renewal of the mind hmm. because there's so many programs in there that keep us from our highest good and so much division attention deficit dyslexia and and here we are self-destructing does that make sense yeah it does and uh, a couple questions come to mind well, the one reason people didn't see me do this but you saw me turn around a minute ago and it was to pick up this book which was written by the woman I interviewed last week. And it was about a young man who was basically diagnosed as schizophrenic, um, and, but who was like an incredibly deep, intuitive person, and basically misunderstood. And he, he foresaw his own death and draw, drew pictures of it. He was struck by lightning. Who, who can predict that? Uh, and then she, she began communicating with him once he was on the other side and came through with all kinds of interesting and profound uplifting evolutionary you know information which was helping his parents and all kinds of other people so i just found it interesting that coincidental but in, and interesting that you mentioned that in, in the native culture schizophrenics were actually considered to be people who had a foot in both sides you know who were who are tuned into worlds. spirit yeah so there's that both worlds it, it just i mean i worked with a, with a woman out here that was diagnosed schizophrenic 15 years under on, on every medication under the sun mm -hmm. and um there's a thing 
genealogy out here is huge in New Zealand and in our in our indigenous world huh. to understand where we come from mm -hmm. before we understand where we're going. Yeah. Now this woman basically held the genealogy for both sides of her family. Mm -hmm. Now I worked with her for a year and a half, sweat lodging, prayer, fasting. We finally found that the genealogy, the voices that she was hearing were the people that were connected to her through genealogy. And there was work that she had to do for them. Mm. And once she, once she started connecting on those levels, the voices started fading out. And today she's a productive uh, individual moving in society and, and off of medication. So they were just trying to get through to her and she wasn't, she was ignoring right. them. She wasn't channeling in. She didn't know where, where this was coming from. Right. So she went to see it. She, she goes out and sees a doctor. They diagnose her. Boom, here's medication, da, da, da. And she was still loopy. Yeah. You know, even with medication and, and still hearing the voices that they were going to stop. Hmm. But we started unveiling that and really going back and taking a look at it. It was a beautiful thing to see this woman come back. Hmm. I'll tell you, when she first came into my presence, I wouldn't even touch her. Yeah, she was so so vexed and so contaminated. It was like, whoa, wait a minute, <laughs> you know? She was laughing, crying, you know, just completely out there. Yeah, but you know, she was just tormented, you know. And so, yeah, I I believe that there is there is hope if you can dig deep. And you know, it's it's really hard for, you know for that system to, to say that, say the, the, uh, the mental health system to coin this, mm -hmm. to, to bottle it and package it because each individual, uh, a clinician and therapist really has to know themselves before they can work with another human being. Yeah. And a lot of times the clinician and therapist is so sick, they have no, no business working with their, with, with their clients because they're, they're, they're not in touch with their inner self, not saying all of them are like that. But the majority of them are because they they want to save the world, and that's no different from healers. Mm. They want they want the outside experience because really inside they're saying, "I need help." Yeah, interesting. So you have this sign behind you, Val Valor and Tonic, and uh, which is I guess the name of the organization you're working with and through there in New Zealand. And there's some kind yeah. of oh, it says the wellness center down beneath that. So yeah. is is that an actual physical building that you have, like a center, a, oh, yeah, yeah. a we, clinic? We do. We we have a clinic here. We do acupuncture, a lot of different stuff, mm -hmm. uh, raindrop therapy. But we we have an, an uh, as well as a uh, outdoor facility where we do the sweat lodging and mm -hmm. questing and all sorts of Native American crafts. What I've done is I've taken our Four Winds organization. We have a Four Winds Wellness in America, Australia, and New Zealand that we basically kind of work in different areas to be able to facilitate and give to the people what they need. Uh, Where's the one in America? Uh, in St. George area. St. George, Utah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, yes. We have a mutual friend that you were talking to I, about that. I've worked, on, worked on, I've worked on a lot of different wellness centers and actually train people how to to use the programs that we do to take people through the rites of passage mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. taking them into a place of connecting and yeah there's just a really deep level of what we teach at four winds um the sacred hoop uh, ceremony and, and seminars that we teach um drum workshops rhythm frequency colors therapy because there's systems in the body that basically connect to the colors. And so when we take people through color therapy, immediately when they see a, a specific color, it basically takes us back into the system, whether it's the root, the sex gland, the adrenals, the spleen, solar plexus, liver, heart, lungs, throat, pineal, pituitary crown, and your energetic field. So, you know, there's colors connected to it that basically reveal where the trauma is at and where it's hmm. residing. So it sounds like you have a whole potpourri of different therapies and tactics. Some of them kind of traditional and ancient, and you know, and to, to, uh, originating from your culture, and others maybe from modern sources. You're just kind of taking whatever works and and. Using oh yeah, that. You know, and that's the thing. You you got to intermarry everything, you know. And the more the more tools you have in your toolbox, as long as you're connected to spirit, you're not going to misdiagnose. Right. You know, whether it's rapid eye therapy, whether, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it's to me, it's 
like I say, if, if I if I spent five minutes with you, and, and you're in my office, and we're in our in our space, you're immediately revealing to me what's really going on within mm-hmm. you, uh, and so if we can build that relationship and get past the fear and the separation, and oh, and you're white, not native, and black, and you know, get get all through that, then we can get to that place of of wellness, mm-hmm. and 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 you know, taking you to higher levels of understanding and where it really came from. And um, yeah, yeah, get you get you more to to a healthy state. How many people are you working with at any given time in, in these clinics or centers? Well, you know what, I, I, I'm working with 15, 20 at a time, sometimes 150 at a time. Bigger group uh, meetings and things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I do I do different, you know, say one on ones. Uh, we'll do group work where you know we to me i like to explain everything so this way when they say go into the sweat lodge they know what they're getting they know what each direction means they know you know the song and and whatever's going on in that lodge it's not a mystery yeah and i I suspect that you do the sweat lodge in a safe and responsible way because there was some guy who i don't think knew what he was doing who killed a couple people in arizona you probably heard about that Keeping them in a, a, yeah, well, a sweat lodge too long, too hot. Well, that's that's number one. You got to look at your right, a right to do it. Yeah. You know, did he have the right to 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 do that? You know, did he just learn it somewhere and, and wanted to capitalize on capitalize on it? You know, for monies and a lot of times when we look at what we do as 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 medicine people. And there's that exchange with money. Sometimes it'll defile what we're doing mm-hmm. because if we start putting our intention more on the money rather than the healing, then you start losing your talent and and your gift. And so that world is really difficult for me to balance. Yeah, really how, how do you deal with that? Well, it's residual income creating things. You know, uh, they create residual income. So this way, if you have a, a mother. A single mother that needs some help, you're not saying, "Well, hey, wait a minute. If you don't pay me 150 bucks an hour, I can't see you." Right. You know, let's let's work out a barter system where you come in and do something for the organization, and we'll give you the treatment. Right. You know, and those because the money to. they pay, and that way you're able to pay the exactly. rent and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Because it nothing is free. Right. You know, it, and 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 if people get something free, that there's no there's no value to it. Yeah, you know, and that's what that's what it. welfare system, right? That's what a welfare system creates. Mm-hmm. You know, when somebody can stay home and and get paid for stay, staying home and have more children and get a raise every year, then why not stay home? You know, yeah. And that's the mentality of people today in in some areas. Well, you know the old saying, you know, give a man a fish and he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish and he eats for a lifetime or something. So, I guess you want to empower people and not have them dependent on you. We take them to another level, and that's mending the nets. Yeah, you know? that's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this way, uh, uh, they have the tools to to fix what's broken. Mm-hmm. You know, when things come into their lives, they can sit back and say, "Wait a minute, this is my stuff. It's your stuff. We can open it up and and uh, see where it's going and find solution to problem." Yeah. You know, I heard you and say I, in some interview that. Um, so we better hold on because God's going to shake the world, uh, you know, to kind of, I guess you're, you're saying to, to wake it up out of its stupor, you know. So, I mean, do you have a sense um, either personally or is there any sort of thing, any predict- prediction in your, in your tradition about where the world might be going in the next decade or two or three? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, there's things happening all over the world today. Mm-hmm. And there's 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 a an attack on the water, you know, and and not only uh, the water, to me, I mean the trees, the water, the uh, air. It, the, it starts. It yeah. starts. With, it starts with Miniwachoni, the, this, the water that's sacred that gives mm-hmm. life. If we don't have water, then you know where are we heading as a human species? You know, are we going to end up? And there's there's areas in America where they they recycle the the sewage water, and, yeah. you know. And and the the frequency is still living in the water, mm-hmm. you know. Stop and really think about it. Uh, uh, here in New Zealand, there's places where the water is extremely pure. 
and I'm grateful uh, to be here to, to have that experience. Uh, but I really, I really believe that we as a people need to, to really look at what's happening here in that heart space mm -hmm. and, and really start looking at the square systems that we're stuck in and then learn to, to really get back to number one, nurturing the female. Mm -hmm. I believe that's that's a huge thing that needs to happen today, and that's to to show that unconditional love to the female, instead of looking at the female as objects and using and abusing. You know, um, we have to get back to that place as as males to to really honor the life givers, mm -hmm. and that's a huge campaign that we're working on today, is is teaching people how to get to that place. You know, but a lot of times it's it's loving yourself and loving your mother and and loving the earth. You know, so this way we can connect with with that energy of of, of female in love. That's great. Um, what was I just gonna say? Oh, water. Um, yeah, I mean that's what Standing Rock was all about, wasn't it? It's the yeah. the fear that the Dakota Access Pipeline was going to pollute the sacred water. It's not when I mean, it, I mean, it's not, you know, to me, I look at I look at things in America that are being pre-staged right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was shown to me that, that pipeline is just going to it's pre-staged so that when it breaks, it's all about relocating the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And once they relocate indigenous people, then they go for the for the resources underground. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's happening. So you mean, are you saying that? That, that it will be intentional if that pipeline breaks so as to I'm, give I'm an, saying, an excuse to move the people? I'm not saying anything. I just, uh, to me, I, I pray that it doesn't happen. Mm. But, um, you know, everything happens for a reason. It, you know, with technology today, we don't even need oil, you it, know? That's true. There's so, much, stopping really so many better things coming along. Oh, oh yeah. And, and, you know, why not pre-stage it? You know, uh, mm. To me, if we can really get back to the basics and um, really look at technology and alternative powers, um, we can create a, a, a better place on this planet for, for the next generations to come. Mm -hmm. But are the generations going to be so stuck in the box that, you know, well, are they going to be original thinkers? Like we were saying about these younger people, you know, that are coming in, I think there's a new a new generation coming in, at least a lot of them, who are a lot more enlightened, you know, than um, you know, their, their parents and grandparents were. There's higher consciousness is being born. Yeah, yeah, all day long. I mean, I meet, I meet youth today that are so switched on, mm. but you know, in, some of the, in some of the situations, you know, it, you can see where they're completely struggling because they're, they're connected to drugs and different things that are just dumbing them down, you know. Uh, so they they don't have that enthusiasm of going out and making it happen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, well, I'm just going to settle for this, you know. Yeah, and the way things are set up, even if you want to make it happen, you end up, you know, go to college, you end up with tens of thousands of dollars of debt, you know. So it's, we're, we're not sort of, I mean, there's so many policies that are just not support, that don't, you know, here's the question. I mean, there's that idea of seven generations in Native American wisdom. And there, there's so many policies that come down these days that don't even look ahead one generation. I mean, they're so short-sighted. You know, companies are thinking of the next quarter's profit earnings and, and you know, Trump just pulled out of the Paris Accord. You know, we, we, there, there's just so many things that we're, we're not considering what the world might be like uh, 50, 100, 200 years from now. Well, maybe we need to get rid of Trump and bring in Gump. <laughs> Forrest Gump? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, to me, it's, yeah, it's going to be uh, pretty interesting to see where it all goes in the next five to ten years. I think uh, so, too. Um, it's but for me, I... There's that Chinese me, curse, maybe you, may you be born in interesting times, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, 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 it was once said in, in prophecy as well as the four colors of the, of the medicine wheel uh, working in reverse order was the red in the east governed the land of America and then the white man came, 
governed the land, and a black man came and governed the land, Obama, now the yellow man will come in and govern the land. Or orange, you know, in case, and, maybe. And, and, yeah, and when that happens, it, it'll, after that, the cycle will fall back into the hands of, of the red man, huh. the indigenous. Well, that is I interesting, believe, actually, because a lot of... Um, a lot of major corporations and buildings and whatnot in the U.S. are are owned by Chinese who are looking for some place to put their money. Well, yeah, and you know the amazing part about it is, is I really believe that, and, and I've taken this negative twist on reservations. I really believe that 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 we were put on reservations because reservations will become the last stronghold of America. Hmm. If pe people will go back to the reservation to learn. Uh, the ancient ways and, and how to live in harmony and international banking will not own America because of the reservation systems that have been put in place hmm. throughout America. That's kind of like what the point I was trying to make at the very beginning of this interview where there's as in my understanding that I there's a it may have been lost to a great degree but there's a sort of a, a sacred connection in traditional cultures to the laws of nature, we might call it, and um, and perhaps in in a way, the reservations are the last stand of of that connection. And obviously, the, they're most of them, to my knowledge, are very troubled. I mean, if you go to you know um, that what's that reservation in South Dakota? Um, Pine know, Ridge. Pine Ridge. Yeah. I mean, there's so much unemployment and alcoholism and all this stuff. I mean, are there, you're in New Zealand, but are, are there, do you have hope for a resurrection of the, uh, yeah. of the spirituality, perhaps starting on the reservations and spreading from there? Well, well it's moving there. It's, it's just reigniting that, that memory. Mm -hmm. You think you it's know, waking it's up? Back, it's going back to the, to the, to the youth. And I'm heading back there in, in two weeks to, okay. to do, Stuff. Um, so do you do you, um, are you optimistic? Do you see any signs that it's starting to resurrect, starting to wake up again? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna uh, because, like I say, we have we have people out there that that have that that medicine and that knowledge that's basically covered with these with these heart walls. Mm. We just have to get rid of the the heart walls and get to the to the center and and take people to that place of awakening. Because in the east, as the sun comes up in ceremony, the the, the awakening comes from the east, mm -hmm. and the acceptance and awareness, um, you know, and, and to be to be centered, you know, all these beautiful things, things that we teach within the rites of passage to take us up that staircase to the celestial realms, all that information is going to come forth, and it's going to come forth through through not just tribal lands, but those that are that are awakening with the knowledge to to help their people. Yeah. I don't believe, yeah, that we should be separate. I, to me, I have no boundaries of, of who I work with. I, I've gotten past the, oh, I hate the white man for what they did for people. Yeah. You know, to me, I, I cannot teach what I teach if I'm, if I'm caught up on something that took place that I can't even elaborate on because I wasn't there. Right. You know, how can I say, well, this chief shouldn't have surrendered, you know, when he was looking at his, you know, grandchildren and, and families dying all around him. You know, what do we what do we do? You know, so I can't elaborate on it or even remotely thinking of think about judging it, you know, because it, it happened for a reason. And 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 you look at the the struggle of America, I really believe that there's gonna come a time where the reservations will become a very strong place. Hmm. Once we can, you know, get rid of those that that want to control the reservations, like maybe the Buell of Indian Affair. Who knows? You know. Yeah, I mean, these days I'm I'm going to see Ama tomorrow, uh, who's a, a Indian saint that comes to the U.S. And uh, the venue where she's coming is uh, a casino on an Indian reservation. It's a Hilton hotel called the Buffalo Thunder in Santa Fe. Uh, and yeah, yeah. it's in the middle of an Indian reservation. So that, that's something, too, where, where it's one of the sort of lowest forms of, of Western culture, gambling, has become the, the, the lifeblood of, economic lifeblood of many tribes. <laughs> Though, I mean, wonder if that's going to change. They may not have a lot of Square. Square, yeah. 
It goes back to the note. It goes back to to that system. Let's get the white man back for taking our lands and 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 create a casino. Well, I've worked with tribal people where casinos are creating a lot of damage with the youth, as well as good. You know, education. They they put boundaries. You know, you get to X Y. You know, A B C. You get past these levels and you receive this money and you know they kind of keep the carrot in front of the donkey, which is good, but. You know the reality to it is is we're still trading we're still we're still bound by a system yeah you know uh so the reality is is do we really even have freedom you know once they put your name on a piece of paper and leverage you with another country uh for u.s debt then is your name really free mm. you know and so those are things that you have to kind of look at uh not 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 just on on that side and that level but your heart you know how many of us are truly sovereign well if i if i'm stuck in addiction no i'm not free you know am i out of debt no i'm not uh, out of debt because i'm still i'm still fighting the animal mm -hmm. and, and i really believe that when we get past that that struggle that internal struggle and we start looking at the beauty then you you really start to flourish but there's there's ways of doing it and it isn't just empty the mind you know, there, there's there's a chancolota, the, the road that we need to get on to take us to this place so that we can see things very, very clear without separatism, without division. You see, so when you start looking through here and, and, and you and you tie that into the feeling, which is spirit and your internal self, then you will not be misled or misdirected. It doesn't work that way. Mm. But when I stay in my mind, and I don't check with my heart, it doesn't work for me. Hmm. It always betrays me. Interesting. My mind will betray me. Yeah. You said something interesting a little while ago about um, if we're properly attu <coughs> attuned, then celestial beings will come to our aid. They'll help us. And I found that fascinating. I, I think actually it works that way, that there are all sorts of unseen impulses of intelligence that if we can... Uh, be properly attuned with them will support us and and smooth our path and help us achieve our aspirations is there anything more you can say about that well just look at it this way uh, go back in your culture 200 300 generations generations you, or years uh, or years yeah. you take you take uh your people that that lived in a time where there wasn't a lot of this stuff that we're dealing with today so they they're 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 hierarchy. They're they're high. They're in a higher level of understanding rather than somebody that that died a generation back or whatever. You know. So those are the ones that really we need uh, to help us in in fighting the battle hmm. between dark and light. Some call it the devil. Some call it God. To me, there's positive and negative movement all around us at all times. It's whether the cell wall or this body that we have lets the stuff get in hmm. and you got to remember we have ports there's 13 ports throughout the body where things get in the ears the eyes the nose the mouth here you know two at the bottom up on top you know there's ports and when we um open ourselves up to things coming in uh the play around within our mind and in our thought we begin to go after the nucleus Go after the spirit and soul of who you are as an individual. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to make sure that you're constantly in tune. Uh, uh, sometimes things come at us and we think, oh, this is pure light, and we step into it, and then it becomes an event that it wasn't that well, it wasn't that pleasing. Yeah. So. Somebody sent in a question that happens to be the very same question I asked you before we started recording this, and so obviously at least one other person had the same question. I might as well ask it. Um, it's stated online that you were born into the Cheyenne Nation. Why then do you use the name Lakota, which is the Sioux Nation? No, my grandfather was in the Mini Koju people. The, the, the Lakota people are, are it's, it's a band. You know, there's, there's it's, it's like, um, how would they call it in, in, in your culture? Like, uh, like the Irish or, uh, the, or a, a certain, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. On my on my dad's side, they were from the, his father's grandfather was from the Mini Koju uh, people. Those who camped by the river and uh, Shaila people. Mm -hmm. And to me, I haven't had the privilege of of being raised 
on the reservation because we, we were migrating. My, my forefathers decided not to take that, that um, stamp of, of, of government control, mm -hmm. see, which I'm really grateful for because a lot of times you can be bound by that control, you know, and so we became pretty industrious people. Um, and, you know, my mom's side, you know, different story, you know, but it's, it's a mixture of, of in our, in our lives, it's a mixture of many cultures that come together. Okay. You know, so the, 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 I think you explained to me earlier that Cheyenne is sort of an offshoot of Lakota or sort of uh, co yeah. cousins in a way, just related, right? Uh, cousins that were related. Um, yeah. Like second cousins, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, when in our culture, when the powwows came in, you know, our people were struggling to, to really look at who we could intermarry mm -hmm. because the, the pickings were slim. And, <laughs> and so powwows would come together. And so, you know, you really could take a look. Oh, well, those people over there are from, you know, the, the lower rural people and although from the Hong Papa people. And, you know, so, yeah, it would be okay to date and, and marry somebody from over there because they're distant, you know, rather than intermarriage mm -hmm. within culture. Okay, um, so I listened, I read the couple of things you asked me to read, and I listened to everything on your YouTube channel, um, and so I enjoyed it, especially some of the music, maybe we'll put a song or two into this interview in the post-production, but, um, well actually before I ask that question, that, that's, that's my question that I sometimes ask is what aren't we covering here, what else would you like to say, but I think I'll, I'll ask you this, um, it's on the news almost every night in the United States, that there's this terrible opioid epidemic and um, you know they're, everybody's trying to figure out what to do about it and, and people are dying from overdoses every day in fairly large numbers and it's just spreading and spreading and I think it's relevant to this show in a sense even though this show is about enlightenment and spiritual development because it says something about what's going on in the collective consciousness and what people are dealing with and how they're trying to sort of numb themselves rather than wake up. Um, I mean, I had this realization when I was 18 that there's only one way out, and that's sort of up, up in terms of higher consciousness. You, you, if you try to blot it out, you're just going to have to deal with it again later. Uh, I think you say in your book, um, feelings buried alive never die. Um, so what observations do you have on the, the whole addiction thing that is an epidemic in the United States, at least, maybe other places. And, uh, you know, what sort of wisdom can you bring to that topic? Well, sedate is see you at another date. Sedate, you know, um, we, we tend to not want to deal with the emotion today, so we'll put it off till tomorrow and sedate. Uh, opiates are are huge in America at this time. You know, young people, and when I was in in America working out there, uh, that, you know, a lot of these young people were getting into the, the pharmaceuticals. Right. And and, and then, robbing their... Then they go from there to heroin because the heroin's cheaper. Yeah, right? yeah, because it's, it's too hard to get, number one. Right. You know, uh, prescriptions, prescription drugs, and then and then they, they venture off into street drugs and street opiates, mm -hmm. which are the heroin and... And they're uh -huh. synthetic things that are easier to overdose on. And, and anyway, but, but I mean, what do you see that as symptomatic of in terms of the, a crisis of spirit? Well, I, I believe it's just the traumatic events. Uh -huh. You know, you don't just wake up saying, well, I think I need to sedate. Yeah. You know, something has to happen in life to trigger that sedation. You know, uh, trapped emotion. Mm -hmm. you know, let's look at trapped emotion. Let's look at traumatic events that create trapped emotion. They create a, a, an acidic environment. Um, let's look at a toxic environment. Let's look at um, the second chamber of the body. You know that that this is where our contracts reside. Uh, uh, the worry, blame, and anger live in the second chamber. And most people that that, that are dealing with anger uh, take a drink, mm -hmm. uh, try to sedate it, and, and it lives in the liver. And so we have to. Go back to peeling the onion and taking a look at what's created this energy that's living within this individual's world. Mm. What what created it? What event created it? Um, and it, and it's about evaluation. It's it's taking it all the way back to really look at. It. 
So since this is an epidemic involving potentially millions of people, I don't know what the actual numbers are, but they're huge, um, how do we peel the onion on a mass scale? You need him to contact the Four Winds Wellness now. Uh, <laughs> I think you'd be a bit uh, overwhelmed. Well, you know, you know, the, the, the sad part about it is, man, is it's an industry. It, it fuels the industry. You're very right. And, and you know, people are starting to go after uh, some of these drug companies in terms of the, just the way they went after the tobacco companies, in, 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 suing them because they were intentionally addicting people to that drug. Okay. Uh, yeah, and they're, and they're realizing now that a lot of the pharmaceutical companies are, have been doing the same thing. Right. You know, well, the thing is, too, is even non-pharmaceutical, it's, it's still an industry. Yeah. You know, people are making money on it. You know, the more arrests and, and crime and everything else, it, it just fuels the machine. Hmm. You know, and, and so why get rid of something? Why, why bring in something that works? And that's that's what I'm talking about, thinking in reverse order. Mm. You know, the systems out there today they say, well, why bring something in that works, man? This is working really well because we're all we're all in a job. We need more counselors and we need more prison guards and more prisons. And yeah. and all it does is fuel the machine. Mm. So so why bring something in that works? I mean, I, I was struggling with that with mental health. Now, how do you take this genealogy incident and and look at you know, correcting this this person's so-called schizophrenia. Um, how does this work? Well, then I was labeled a witch doctor. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I, I look at stuff like that and I'm like, well, okay. But to me, the reality of it is, is, is knowing that that person is now my sister and, and, and her and I love each other and she's, we can sit down and, and, and share some intimate, thoughts and, and what took place throughout the recovery and new thoughts and other things that are coming. Mm. Now, like I say, you know, with with a lot of the the systems out there that, that don't really take on this this sort of, say, cell memory and genetic disorders and how it moves throughout the genetic lines. And but, you know, if you look at young stuff, you know, when he was working with with Dr. Bob and Bill W from from Alcoholics Anonymous, I think he was saying that uh, you need to have a spiritual awakening. Sure, that's AA yeah. is essentially a spiritual organization. Right, right. And so if you don't have a spiritual awakening, then it, it doesn't start anywhere else because that's why to us the spirit is in the east. Mm -hmm. The spiritual awakening comes with the sun that rises in the east. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the West is about putting yesterday behind you. We create worlds without numbers. Every day the sun comes up and goes down, we create our world within the world, and our virtual reality is what we create. We can either create a world of joy, happiness, success, abundance. You know, it's just clearing that, that mindset. You got to jackhammer that concrete out of your head and, 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 and re-pour and, and, and bring in this, this other knowledge and this you know, way of thinking, right thinking, because most of us are really self-destructing just through thought. Yeah. What do we create every day? I mean, I, I love to create beauty and, and friends and, and, a, and a good meal and, and let's sit down and talk and share some knowledge. That, to me, that's the way I like living, not, oh, well, I'm going to hoard this because I think only a few need to have it. Mm. I think everyone needs to have it. Well, it's a beautiful thing you're doing. I'm glad you're dedicating your life to this. Um, is there anything that, that's, that's important to you that you feel we haven't touched upon during this interview? Uh, food. You know, what about food? food? You know, what, what's happening with our food today? Sure. You know, let's look at, you know, it's so, it's so expensive for organics. You know, the people out here live on bread and flowers and, and, and fillers, you know, and that's what's creating this toxicity within, within our bodies. Mm -hmm. And you diabetes know, and, so, and so on. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think food is a big issue. And um, I believe if we all go back to a little square patch of land and creating our own gardens and, and having the awakening to be able to tend that garden and to weed your garden, that, that's a whole other level mm -hmm. of discussion, you know, because a lot, a lot of us like the quick fix. Right. McDonald's, it's really easy to do a drive through and boom, 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 and you're off yeah. with a stomach ache for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. But, 
And the whole genetic engineering issue has actual spiritual implications in a way because it, it sort of implies that it's the same sort of you know, tendency to dominate nature that we were talking about earlier, thinking that we can understand better than nature can, you know, how, what's, how the DNA works and what's, what's going, you know, how a plant is supposed to develop and, and doing all sorts of monkeying around on, on very fundamental levels which we don't really fully understand and, and kind of playing God and potentially creating disastrous outcomes since we, you know, we, we really don't understand what we're doing. We're tinkering in a dangerous way. Like, for instance, there, Monsanto has a seed which um, can't be, once the plant has grown, you can't get seeds from that plant to, to plant a new crop. You have to buy more seeds from Monsanto. All right, so if that, if that kind of r spread uncontrolled, run amok, it could wipe out certain crops and prevent them from ever growing. Yeah, so right. Well, with with, with, with cross pollination and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I mean, there could be a plant growing over here with with with, you know, complete whatever to kill off another another plant. You know, the genetics from this plant can kill off another plant. And and yeah, heirloom seed. You know, they want to get rid of the heirloom seed so this way they can control the actual food industry. Mm -hmm. And once they control the food industry, they control the people. Right. So they can put any astro astronom astronomical number on it to say, hey, well, either you pay for it or die. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if it'll ever get to that extreme, uh, but to me, there's a lot of people working that are counteracting that as well, though. They're, they're going out and creating seed banks and doing some beautiful work out there to hold on to uh, what's right. But you look at you look at the the alteration of genetics. It's the same thing with a human being. You know, when you when you go through events and different things happen in one's life, it it alters your genetics as well. Mm -hmm. Your way of thinking, uh, the connection to to the deities and and to you know our ancestry, it does the same thing to us. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's there's a physical aspect to this as well as a spiritual aspect. You know, and so we have to look at both. Because, you know, the reality is, is the body's going to die and go into the earth and become the matter. But what happens to the spirit and soul? Hmm. You know, what happens to this? You know, we, we've lost the ability even to, you know, with texting and, and, and this listening to people's tone and the breath. <laughs> oh, bro. You know? Yeah. I saw this vi uh, thing on the news it, last night where this woman was looking at her phone. She was walking along the sidewalk. And in New York, and they had one of those things where they open up two metal doors, you know, so they can go yeah. under there and work. And she was just oblivious. She walked right along, and then boom, down into the pit. Uh, so it's like that, that is sort of emblematic or symbolic of uh, something in the, cult, in the mass mentality these days that is really off. Well, I'll tell you something. You look at your television, it'll snatch your attention. Mm. You look at your phone, it'll take your attention. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at, you look at, like for instance, I was, I was looking at the Apple phone and on the back there's an apple with a bite out of it, you know, and, and, and that goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. And, <laughs> and you know, you look at with, with that symbol right there, we're all biting into the, into the tree of duality mm. and, and we're all stuck in this world wide web but it, it keeps us from, from really examining that original blueprint mm -hmm. and going back to yourself as a child of God opposed to creation. You know, I know, I, to me, I know I'm connected to Wakantanka, the creator. And so there is no division and no separation. Mm -hmm. See, but societies will teach you, no, you're separate. You know, that, don't believe into that. Don't bite into that system. There's an interesting, interesting question here, though, which is that um, you know sometimes people think, all right, well, if we really get back to an ideal society, it's going to be very simple, agrarian, you know, non-technological, and 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 so on, you know, just like the good old days. But I have a feeling that you know Pandora's box has been opened, and and we're not going to get back to a non-technological. Age, it's going to be if 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 we survive, it's going to be something totally new, in which very advanced technologies coexist with a a resurgence or, or renaissance of the spirit, uh, and that renaissance of the spirit will counterbalance 
the, the damaging effect that technology has had when it's not you know, supported by spirit. So you know, if we look forward 50 I, years, I, we, we could have a very advanced technological state, but also very advanced spiritually. Right. I believe that because this way we'll be able to communicate with people all over the world. We are now. Gonna... You're in New Zealand. I'm in Iowa. Look yeah. at this. So, We're so talking with about that, spirituality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With that, we can exchange that and feel good about it, and then it can go to others and keep on going. And then networking. You know, uh, there are, there are communities out here that are doing the work. You know, that are growing food and and moving more towards that that oneness within societies that, that that's that's really important but then you know on the other side too there's societies that fall apart because you know they don't have the infrastructure in mm -hmm. you know each and every one of us has a stewardship to do to be able to maintain a community so what are we good at and what do we like to do you know there's some that like to garden and there's some that like to make milk cows and there's <laughs> some that like to build homes and, and there's some who like to write software Right, right. It, and it's just putting people in the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we're looking at bringing in roundhouses into New Zealand and Australia. Oh, nice. And introducing the round back to the indigenous. Mm -hmm. And we're working on that right now. We're like a month, maybe two months away, away from, yeah, getting it all going here. In the Vedic Which culture, really they, they, they have a term. In the Vedic culture, they have a term called Dharma, and it basically means that course of action, which for a particular individual is most appropriate, most evolutionary, most suitable for, for them, for their makeup. And it talks about how society, if society loses dharma, if, I, if, if individuals lose dharma or on a mass scale of society does, then there's all these severe problems, the whole thing kind of breaks down. And so the reestablishment of dharma, of right, you know, of right livelihood and so on, is considered to be extremely important. It's just, I'm just reiterating what you just said. I just want to pointing out in other cultures yeah. say this also. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's creating that perfect balance. Mm -hmm. And that's that's knowing the male and female and that's knowing sky and earth. Yeah. You know, knowing mom and dad, knowing sky and earth and bringing those four circles together and you sit right in the middle of it. Hmm. When you have that perfect balance, you're in perfect harmony, you are the love that you are, the truth is coming from your mouth, your thoughts are pure because you go through the renewal process. But, you know, we have to get through the past before we can get into the future. And the past is going back and taking a look at character defects that we were born with. Mm. You, know, um, you know, gluttony and all these other things that we have to overcome. Mm -hmm. Depression. You know, people, if we go back in depression. Well, why are you depressed? I don't know why I'm depressed. Well, let's look at Let's look at your genealogy. Before you know it, we start unveiling it. And then, boom, this person is actually doing the healing for the one that was depressed five, six, seven generations back. Mm, mm, yeah. And that's that's what turns it all on its head. And that, that that's what really changes the whole event, you know, and um, and putting them at a power state saying, you know, what, you've been called and chosen to do this for your ancestry. When I work with young indigenous and non-indigenous people, I'm like, you know what, you stepped into a realm now where you. You, are, you have been chosen to, to clear the lines for your ancestors. And that's a big responsibility. Yeah. Are you ready to do it? Do you have the courage to do it? Because if not, let's take you through the first rite of passage and get from, from fear to courage. Mm -hmm. That's just one level of shifting and, and, and teaching you how to become grounded and, and overcome you know, all these different issues that keep you from your true identity. Mm -hmm. That might have came through the genetic lines. So really clean, clearing the genetic lines is huge. I think, I think it's really important what you're saying right now. Um, and you're obviously much more conversant with it than I am. But again, I, I come back to the thought that many, many cultures have this ancient, you know, traditional cultures have this understanding that you have to sort of go back and help the ancestors and clear the genetic lines and so on. Um, and you know, that it, it works in both directions. Um, in, in the Vedic culture, again, they have this idea that if an individual becomes enlightened, it, um, it enlightens seven generations, I think, I think it's seven, or am I getting that from Native American? But it enlightens a number of generations in either direction. Uh, and, yep. they and they have all sorts of means and measures and rituals and so on to try <clears throat> to try to clear things for the ancestors because it's considered to be so important 
for our, you know, for us now, as well as right. for them. Well, you know what we we live. Um, what is it? Three twenty-eight year cycles, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in our lodge, when we bring, you know, seven stones in, for each section of, of our lodge, there's twenty-eight uh, stones in total. Mm -hmm. But the the first seven is working through conception seven, and the next seven was is from seven to fourteen, mm -hmm. fourteen to twenty-one, and it just keeps on moving. You know, and it's important that we go back and actually be able to do the jubilee where we can actually leave the first seven years behind us rather than rolling that into the next uh -huh. seven year cycle and then in the next seven year cycle and then the next before you know it that's what creates the heart walls yeah see so if we can peel those layers and go back we have to go back to do the clearing so this way you can stand as as a pure vessel as 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 a we call it the hollow bone or, or a, a pure uh, vessel to actually move that energy, hmm. you know. And, and so a lot of energy workers, uh, I've, worked, I've walked them through that process as well so that they can be the, the best they can be in what they do. That's great. Well, you're doing good work. And uh, I think we've given people a nice sampling of your thoughts and, you know, introduction to some of the things you do. And um, as always, I'll link to your, your website as well. I always link to everybody, the website of everybody I interview so that they people can get in touch with you. And uh, do you do any kind of distance work? Like if somebody's in Germany or something, oh, you, you talk, do it talk to people on all Skype and stuff all the time. Uh, I go into America twice a year, mm -hmm. uh, into Australia a lot, uh, New Zealand. You know, um, I live here full time and, and like I say, I, I spent a couple of probably four months in America. Good. Uh, so I, I mean, I, I'm going to America in two weeks and I'll be there for Sundance and, and a few other things, that, uh, traditional uh, stuff mm -hmm. that we're doing back home. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and so fourwindsfullness.org, you know, we, 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 we have a, a nonprofit organization in, in three different countries and, mm -hmm. and so we're doing some phenomenal work with the people. That's great. Thanks. Yeah. Well, keep up the good work. And uh, this has been good speaking with you. Um, right. So I'll, let me be, don't just don't disconnect. I want to make a few general wrap up points. Um, so as I mentioned a minute ago, I'll link to your website and people who want to find out more can can get in touch. Um, and this interview is part of an ongoing series. I'll, I've been doing them for about seven years now, and I intend to continue doing them. So if you find this interesting, um, go to the website, batgap.com. If you like, you can uh, sign up to be notified by email each time a new interview is posted. There's an audio podcast of this if you like to listen to podcasts while you commute or whatever. And, um, you know, quite a few other things on the site. Just check out the menus. It's all pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> so thanks, John. It's been, uh, it's been good spending time with you. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, and um, thanks to those who've been listening or watching, and we'll see you next week. Next week is a fellow named Tony Samara, uh, and I've just started investigating, learning about him. Sounds like an interesting guy, um, and next week you'll learn a lot more about him. So see you then.